How concerned should you be about Cam Akers after week one? And who are we looking forward to seeing this week? All that and more in this episode of Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Welcome into the show, everybody. I am Kate Majuk, uh, newly, newly dubbed senior content creator yes. over at the Gaming Society. Very excited about that one. Got to give myself some pats on the back. And of course, I'm joined by Marcus. Who I'm going to also pat on the back. Uh, Marcus Mosier, you can follow him on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And you can find his work over at PFF, baby. Yeah. Dropping some some betting tips, betting content to help you uh, win some cash this season, which I like money. So I, I assume you all like money, too. But that's not why we're here. No. We're here to recap some Thursday night football. We officially have live season action baby and marcus it was a very surprising and i'll say a very entertaining game but again there were some shocks involved yeah well let's start with buffalo all of your buffalo players are good like if you have any of these guys in dynasty you're fine <laughs> right josh allen 297 yards passing three touchdowns two interceptions one interception was not his fault he also had 50 60 yards on the ground in a touchdown uh, I get that's a, probably going to be QB one performance of the week. Stefan Diggs, eight for one, 22 and a touchdown. If you were worried about the Gabe Davis regression, it's not coming four for 88 and a touchdown. Even Jamison Crowder got a couple of receptions. Isaiah McKenzie scored a touchdown. Honestly, Kate, like we don't have to spend much time in the bills. Like we kind of know who the bills are at this point. Yeah, I would say the biggest, uh, probably the, the biggest uh, question mark for me or biggest maybe surprise element uh, came from the lack of usage from Dawson Knox. We saw him play uh, 50 snaps in the game, which like he was, he was in there. He was, he was on the field for most of the entire game and um, saw him run 25 routes, which is great. And only came up with two targets on the game, which but I was a little surprised. That's going to happen though. Like it's, it's going to happen in some of these games. There'll be weeks where he goes for seven for one Oh five and two touchdowns. It's just, when you get past the top five or six tight ends, this is what you kind of have to expect. Yeah, it, it's definitely a volatile market there at the tight end position. But I was surprised that uh, fresh off receiving that nice, nice contract with uh, what was it, thirty million dollars in guarantees? Like that, yeah. I thought, I thought uh, Josh Allen was going to look his way a little bit more, but alas, uh, Josh Allen does not care about the monies; he cares nope. about the winnies and. Uh, part of that that winnies uh, is the rushing game. So let's talk about the rushing game real quick because James Cook on his first career snap fumbles the ball and only played three snaps the entire game. Uh, just uh, I think it's going to be a long time before we see yep. uh, any sort of reliable involvement if you have james cook in a redraft i'm dropping him yeah i, I agree i mean we knew this backfield was going to be kind of cluttered anyways i always saw zach moss get six receptions well i i still think james cook is going to be fine long term but you're gonna to have to be patient here so redraft drop him hold on to him in dynasty uh can we talk about the rams because that's the i mean there's just a million storylines i think we should start with cam Akers, right uh, Cam Akers did not start this game. Throw Henderson, I think, played every snap in the first two drives. Cam Akers had just three total carries in this game for zero yards, no targets in the passing game. Kate, he is currently, if you're ready for this, RB11 on Dynasty League football right now. I mean, that's a mistake. Like, the writing, again, the writing on the wall has been here for this one. And I was very surprised, uh, and we all know that I've been a huge Daryl Henderson fan. I've talked about the fact that he uh, has been like the more efficient of the two so far in their careers, but I did not expect the drastic difference here. 
Daryl Henderson finished the game 55 offensive snaps, yeah. played almost the entire game. Cam Akers was on the field for just 12 total snaps, yep. Marcus. That is insane to me. Um, like, do you think do you think Darrell Henderson did enough in this game? Because he only had like 70 total yards, averaged 3.6 yards per carry. Did he do enough for you to think or to trust him going into week two, week three, and beyond? I think he did. And like, bear with me here. And again, I try not to be biased. I, I again, I really like Daryl Henderson, the player. But for me, I mean, the, the usage speaks volumes, first off. But I'm not so concerned with what he did with that usage because the Bills defense looked so mm-hmm. dominant. I mean, they were just swallowing up these running backs at the line of scrimmage. So the fact that he managed, uh, you know, any plus yardage at all, I was kind of pretty happy with that, given the way that this Buffalo Bills defense played. Like, Von Miller really has invigorated this entire Mm -hmm. defensive line. Like, they are looking dominant, and they're um, they're, they're looking poised for a very big season. And, it, but this is not the rushing defense we saw last year. So the, the question mark for me comes, what does he do against a more middle of the pack defense? And I think that's when we're going to make that full adjustment. But I mean, based on usage, Marcus, I kind of think you have to play him for the time yep. being. Um, he's at least a flex play. And like, look, the, next week, week two gets the Falcons. Then he yes, gets please. Yes, the please. Cardinals, which, you know, could go sure. either way. I'm in. Um, I mean, I, like next two matchups, at least uh, leading into week four against the 49ers. I'm I'm kind of in on Daryl Henderson, especially with this usage. Uh, two other things I want to mention really quickly before we move on. Cooper Cup. I mean, I've been banging the drum all offseason. I still think he's undervalued. In di- <laughs> yeah, undervalued in Dynasty Leagues. Uh, Kate, he had a, another monster game, 13 catches for 128 yards and a touchdown. He's being valued as wide receiver six right now in dynasty leagues behind guys like AJ Brown, Debo Samuel, Sadie lamb. Like I just don't see this stopping anytime soon. He's, he's now scored a touchdown in six straight games. Actually, sorry, eight straight games. Um, <laughs> that I mean, is laughable. That is absolutely, um, wow. so. In his last 13 regular season games, the fewest amount of receiving yards that he has is 95. The fewest. Yeah, that's, he's good. Um, meanwhile, uh, Allen Robinson, one catch for 12 yards, only had one target until the final play of the game. I'm not concerned. I know a lot of people are freaking out on Twitter. He ran a bunch of routes. He was on the field. The offensive line just didn't hold up for the Rams, so they couldn't take shots down the field. I, I actually think this is a good opportunity to buy low in your redraft leagues and maybe even in your dynasty leagues. Yeah, I think uh, we definitely, I, we saw the worst version. I hope, I pray we yeah. saw the worst version of the Rams that we are going to see this season last night. I mean, this was honestly one of the least Sean McVay looking performances I think I've I've seen since he's become the head coach. Yep. Just disastrous uh on one level to the next you've got to hope that this offense is going to stabilize a bit more you've got to hope that we are going to see some usage like it it might take some force reps and and it might take some more practice because i mean as we saw when the play breaks down matthew stafford's immediate go-to is to cooper cup yep Yep. now you know, will we see some improvement and improved protection with from the offensive line um, and and really allow Matthew Stafford to make the reads on the field? I hope so. I, uh, I think we'll get that. I do. And and again, it kind of comes down, I think, to comfort level too. like this quarterback has been relying on Cooper Cup in these situations uh, for a full season under his belt and. Like getting Allen Robinson in that mix to trust him when the play breaks down, that takes time and repetition. And I think we've just got to give that a little bit of time for the time being though. I'm not looking to uh, start Allen Robinson, like in a redraft league. Um, 
maybe I want to keep him on my bench until I see that target share increase a little bit. All right, let's talk about the other games that are going to be happening here in week one. Uh, but before we do that, we want to tell you about LinkedIn. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple uh, purple hiring frame to the LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that nearly every or every week that nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's talk about week one. Uh, who are you excited to, to see this week, Kate? I am excited to see everybody, Marcus. I just want to put that out there because it's week one, baby. It's week one. I, I'm still just on this high from last night. Yeah. Uh, but there are there are some names that I want to shout out as uh, on my radar, let's say. Um, first off, I want to start with a player that I think has had um, a, a pretty drastic drop in his dynasty stock, Marcus, and that is Damian Harris running back mm. for the New England Patriots. Now, we've heard um, plenty of things about Ramondre Stevenson and his potential to fully take over this backfield, but I still think we need to, like, temper expectations just a little bit, right? Damian Harris uh, has taken this fall down to RB40 in the most recent batch of Dynasty ADP, uh, being drafted behind names like Isaiah Spiller, mm -hmm. like, Chase Edmonds, I, I think that feels like we're undervaluing Damian Harris a bit for what he's coming off of. I mean, Marcus, Damian Harris had a fantastic season in 2021. Um, just like as a reminder, closed out that season with um, a hamstring injury and it nagged and it nagged and it continued to plague him through the rest of the season. He missed time last year. Uh, but still ranked 10th in rushing yards, tied Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, and Elijah Mitchell for the most 100-yard rushing games in the season. Mm -hmm. Insane, by the way, that Derrick Henry is in that mix. Yes. <laughs> uh, but fifth most breakaway runs of 15 or more yards, fifth in scrimmage touchdowns. Like Damian Harris had a great season. I like I'm I'm so baffled by the usage. We know that um the the Patriots backfield can be a volatile one, but to value him as RB40 feels low. And I'm excited to see the usage against the Miami Dolphins, who I think have plenty of question marks on their own sure. uh, on the defense. So I, I think that the matchup is favorable enough. Um, I'm not expecting this to be a huge blowout. I'm expecting this to be a run heavy, very Patriots-esque game. And I think that Damian Harris is probably going to, or carry the ball um plenty and i i think that could drive his his stock up a bit and marcus if they are going to trade him that's great they need to showcase him like they they need to showcase that mm -hmm. he's worth trading for so if that's their goal great he should see more playing time and that will uh help out his dynasty value for me because i i just think rb40 too low and dynasty managers are going to see why in week one. Uh, I'll, I'll say Devontae Adams. Uh, it's our first reveal with him with the Raiders, right? He didn't play at all in the preseason, neither did Derek Carr. There's just, just everybody's assuming that the production is going to drop way off because he's leaving Rodgers and going to Carr. But what if he doesn't? What if Carr just peppers him with targets like crazy, like we saw with Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup on Thursday night? I'm just really excited to see what it looks like. No JC Jackson for the Chargers uh, on Sunday. So 
you would assume that Adams is going to have a big day. Just another player that I'm kind of keeping tabs on. Who else are you excited to watch? I'm excited to watch Damian Pierce. And uh, I I'm, I don't think any of you are surprised on that because I uh, Damian Pierce, I'm going to change my, my Twitter handle to FF Damian Pierce at this point. Um, I, I love the player. I'm expecting actually that he's going to have a down game, but the reason I'm excited to watch him is to see what he can do against a, what I view as a tough defensive matchup. I want to see what he can do, uh, in terms of generating his own yards. Um, what can he do after contact, which again, what we've seen in the preseason has all looked great. Uh, but let's put that to test against some defensive starters yep. from a, a relatively solid defensive uh, matchup here for him and see it like, can he still look good against top tier starters? I, we're going to, we're going to see that. We're going to find out. I should also mention the jets receivers, right? Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson. Like if you're an Elijah Moore owner in dynasty like you're secretly happy that they decided to to let zach wilson sit for the next three games because oh yes we we saw last year like elijah moore had some monster games with joe flacco so i want to see how this offense looks uh, i want to see where wilson's playing is he playing the outside do they move elijah moore to the outside at all i'm just kind of excited to see what this jets offense looks like yeah i think that's absolutely fair and honestly it, like on that note the run game as well so Depth chart was released for week one. And still, interestingly, we saw Michael Carter as the RB1 there. Mm -hmm. And really surprising because I think everybody looked, uh, including myself, looked at Brees Hall as one of the most like pro-ready options that they could have tossed into this offense to instantly take over that role. Now, when you look back at what Michael Carter did in his rookie season, did nothing to really lose that starting job outside mm -hmm. of the fact that like Brees Hall is just a better running back, right? Like Correct. performance wise, there wasn't really an issue there with Michael Carter. I think he did everything he was asked to do and more, but really kind of interested to see how we're going to uh, work these two running backs into the same offense. And I don't know, maybe they see this as an opportunity to, kind of build what um, they, you know, had in college between uh, Michael Carter and Javante Williams, how I it was like a one, a one B. And that was super effective. Like uh, Michael Carter, I think is, is best in a complimentary role, but can mm -hmm. still be super productive in that complimentary role. We might see him much more involved in this team because if I'm guessing and I'm I'm looking at this this, you know, GM and this coaching staff and looking at, you know, Zach Wilson and what can we do to take that pressure off? Uh, I think the best thing they can do for this team is to establish the run. And I think they have two really talented running backs to do that. But one of them is being valued much lower than yes. the other in Dynasty. Yeah. Uh, last player for me, just another guy we haven't seen yet, Travis Etienne. We've only seen him in a couple times in the preseason. He'll get his first regular season start. James Robinson will play. I'm a little dubious about how much of an impact he's going to make, but I just want to see what Etienne's workload looks like. When are they using him? How are they using him? I expect him to have a pretty big game against Washington, so he's, uh, he's somebody that I'm very excited to watch. Kate, we're going to do our favorite segment of the week, promotion, commotion, guys to promote from your bench into your starting lineups. But before we do that, I want to tell you about BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week one lines. BetOnline is also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including the NFL, MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, it's promotion commotion time. Kate, who is somebody who, that you are going to promote from your bench into your starting lineup for week one? 
Uh, this one is uh, a pick for you, Marcus. I dedicate this to you. For those of you in need of some help at the tight end position, I'm throwing Tommy Tremble in there. Uh, yes, in let's go. Now, let me preface this with I do not love I, I don't love the matchup, honestly. I don't love the matchup. I think the the Browns have an absolutely stellar defense, um, especially at linebacker with Jeremiah Awosu Koromoa. Whoo! I, yeah. I like practice that J-O-K. ten times. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was, that's so simple. J. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm tossing it back to the fact that like Ben McAdoo's offense with the Panthers, uh, Baker Mayfield's debut with the team. I think my goal is, uh, or my goal. Uh, and my hope is that they're going to put the ball in his hands. Plenty. We know, um, Christian McCaffrey mysteriously has some sort of shin issue, so you just wonder what is this game plan going to look like? Now, reminder with Ben McAdoo, we saw Evan Ingram come out and have an astonishing uh, nearly 20% target share in his rookie season. And like that was the big Evan Ingram breakout. I think out of the two tight ends they have, Tommy Tremble definitely profiles more as that receiving tight end. I think they kept... Uh, Ian Thomas around for his blocking abilities, not necessarily because they think he can fill that dual tight end receiving slash mm-hmm. blocking role. I think that's Tommy Tremble. And Marcus, looking at what Baker Mayfield has done, he's been more than willing to target the tight end position throughout his career. Mm-hmm. So I think Tommy Tremble fits uh, right in for that. Over the last two years, Marcus has targeted the tight end um, at a 27% or more rate over the course of the season. That's a lot of targets. To Listen, the tight end I'm all in on Tommy Trumbull. So this, this one works for me. Uh, I any, got one. any concerns about the defense before you toss him no. into your tight end? Okay. No, not at all. All. Right. Um, all right. How about Josh Palmer wide receiver for the chargers available uh, in 65% of Ooh. leagues on ESPN right now. Okay, the, the Raiders cornerback situation is not great. They've got Nate Hobbs, who played really well for them. He's their slot corner. I expect him to, to guard Keenan Allen this week. After that, I mean, it's 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 not great. It's Anthony Everett. It's Rocky Sin, who the Colts gave up on. I mean, you and I might be out there by like week two for the Raiders. So <laughs> if you want somebody in a game that, that's going to be going against less than stellar cornerbacks, in a game that should have a ton of points scored. I think this is a good week to, to put in Josh Palmer and see what happens. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely an interesting play. I think the matchup is very conducive for some productivity there. Um, I, yeah, I'm I'm all in in uh, streaming against the Raiders defense. This I, year. I would mention in the, in the week 18 game last year when he was still a part-time player, four for 45 and a touchdown, played a ton of snaps. Sounds like he's had a great camp, had a nice preseason. He's somebody that if you need a what the heck flex, why not? Yeah, I think that's that's uh, worth worth considering here. How about I'm going to I'm going to throw out a name here and I, I don't know. Stop me if you've heard it before, but how about Romeo Dobbs? I don't, oh, I don't sure. know. Like, well, I, was say I, I feel like Lockett, so we can talk about both these guys. We have cooled down on the idea of Romeo Dobbs. I think since. Uh, Christian Watson has come back and has been healthy and we've heard Aaron Rodgers have great things to say, which, uh, you know, I, I, we've also heard him say Mm -hmm. great things about Romeo Dobbs. So I'm, I'm a little bit more interested in Romeo Dobbs considering the time that he's had with Aaron Rodgers throughout Mm -hmm. the entire preseason throughout training camp. He got really valuable reps there and he made a lot of really nice plays I don't think he did anything to hurt his stock no. uh, in the preseason. So I'm kind of wondering if we're going to see a more natural rapport between Aaron Rodgers and Romeo Dobbs. And the question marks loom, right? Is Alan Lazard going to play? We don't know. Um, I'm going to guess when the final injury report comes out today that he will be with a questionable tag and there's going to be snaps to go around. I don't know that uh, Big Bob Tunyon is going to be ready to go. Like, nope. There's going like Aaron Rodgers has to throw to somebody, and I do think that Romeo Dobbs kind of 
comes in with one of the um, best opportunities among the rookies, uh, despite the praise for Christian Watson, just based on that experience and what he's done this this training camp and preseason. I, I, I don't mind promoting Randall Cobb, Romeo Dubs, Sammy Watkins, even into your starting lineup this week. I like the matchup. I, I, well, that and Alan Lazard has not practiced all week. He got stepped on. I mean, Rodgers is going to have to throw to somebody, right? And, mm-hmm. I mean, probably the play here is Cobb, if I had to guess. But if you want some more upside, Watkins, Dubs, make some sense. I, I got one more. This one's really gross. Owned in just 0.5% of ESPN leagues. Oh, my God. How about Noah Brown for the Dallas Cowboys? In the game last year against wow. Tampa Bay in week one, Dak Prescott threw the ball 58 times. 58 times. We know CeeDee Lamb is going to lead the Cowboys in targets in this game, but we also know that the Bucs are going to do their best to take him away. Noah Brown is locked in as the number two receiver this week. Jalen Tolbert kind of struggled in the preseason. We know that Michael Gallup is going to be out. Simi Fahoku has never played an NFL game before. I, I think there's a chance that Noah Brown gets like six targets and catches five of them for 50 yards and a touchdown. Like if you just need somebody or if you're in a super deep league, I wouldn't be opposed to Noah Brown this week. Our, I'm I'm uh, proud of you for reaching those depths, Marcus. I'm not. I always give confident. you a really gross one every week. I give you a really <laughs> really bad one if you're in a tight spot. Really so barfable. Um, yes. Yeah. I like. I think they are going to throw the ball. I think he's going to have opportunity. What he does with that opportunity, I'm not totally sold on. Like in the games where the very few, very few games we've seen. From Noah Brown. In fact, it's only two of them where he's had more than five targets in a season, uh, or in a in a, a single game. Yep. Um, six targets for one reception for 13 yards. Nine targets, six receptions, 53 yards. I'm not holding my breath that that's going to work out. But if you need somebody who's probably even you know available on waivers in your dynasty sure. league in a big pinch. Let's line them up. I love it. All right. That is it for today's show. Thank you, making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the ultimate pro football preview 2022. It is an eight-episode extra extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. All the same places that you would download the Locked on Dynasty podcast. We will be back early on Monday morning breaking down all the action, discussing the, the biggest scores and the most disappointing players uh, from week one. Follow the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Follow Kate at FF Ball Blast. I am at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy week one. We'll see you guys next time.